Greetings, it's me, Green Films Official. Now, before we get into the analysis, I just want to say thank you for all the love and support you guys gave Pi. It really warms my heart that you guys enjoyed the enjoyed the short. If I could hug all of you through the screen, I would. But yeah, anyways, thank you, and let's get on with the analysis. Today, we're going to be covering Uzumaki by famous horror mangaka Junji Ito who was also known for other stories such as Tomi and No Longer Human. I was so hooked on this book, dude. I finished it in like two days. I thought this analysis would be fun to do because I haven't done any book videos yet and Uzumaki is actually being adapted into an anime miniseries on Toonami next year. Anyways, this story takes place in Kurozucho, a fictional seaside town in Japan. We follow Kirie Goshima and her boyfriend Shuichi Saito as they are up against a mysterious entity known as the Spiral, which has cursed the town. Alright, let me get something out of the way real quick. Uzumaki is weird. A scar on a girl's head turns into a spiral that slowly eats away at her. People turn into snails. People's hair begins to have a mind of its own. And then a group of pregnant women turn out to be mosquito people who drink blood for their babies. Also, let's not forget about the guy who is so obsessed with spirals to the point that he turns himself into one. How about this dude that just straight up turns into a monster and the fact that the town gets rebuilt to look like one big spiral. I could go on and on about the weird stuff in this book, but I'm sure you get the idea at this point. However, it's important to understand that Uzumaki isn't just weird for the sake of it. It actually has sort of a sort of meaning within the story. H.P. Lovecraft is a famous horror author and a huge influence on Junji Ito. One thing that H.P. Lovecraft is incredibly well known for is creating the cosmic horror subgenre, and Uzumaki is definitely a cosmic horror story. One of the biggest aspects of cosmic horror is fear of the unknown, and that's something that Uzumaki excels at. We know that this spiral entity is doing all these messed up things to the town and its people, but the thing is we don't actually know why it's doing all of this. We aren't told its motivation for doing all of these things, or even if it has one. A lot of people have said this already, but not knowing anything about the antagonist in a piece of horror media makes them infinitely more interesting, mysterious, and terrifying. Because um, a lot of horror antagonists um, are infinitely less scary once you, once they get some guy in who knows everything about them and he tells and they tell all the secrets and yeah once once everything about them has been stated they're infinitely less memorable and creepy another aspect to the horror of this story is the overwhelming sense of helpless dread Kyrie and Shuichi seeing all the horrible things that are happening around them try their best to save the town, or at least help as many people as they can. But greed and desperation takes over the town's inhabitants, and even if it hadn't, the people of the town are helpless against an omnipotent being that is infinitely more powerful than they are. Kyrie manages to save her brother, but only after he turns into a snail, and then when her and Shuichi descend down to the Spiral City, which is beneath Kurozucho, they are too tired to go on, and so they just give up and accept their fate, and then they are trapped underneath. It's a chilling, haunting ending that is very memorable and dark. It's also implied that the events of the story are just an endless cycle, and that every century or so, um, the entire population of the town gets wiped out, so, you know, that's only slightly terrifying. It also needs to be said that this book is way too damn good at getting you to turn the page. If you look up page turner in the dictionary, <laughs> you'll see a little picture of Uzumaki. <laughs> so what my boy Junji Ito does is that he keeps disturbing pages with, like, dis like a horrific image, 
hidden behind another page that just builds up to that image. And so to finish reading the book, you have to um, turn the page to see the, <laughs> see the horrifying image. And yeah, it's really effective. Scenes like that are littered throughout the book. And it kept me really engaged. It was like, oh boy, what horrifying imagery am I going to see next? I think that's why I finished it in only two days, actually. Anyways, I don't think it should be a secret now, but I think this bad boy is a masterpiece of horror. I can't think of anything I don't like about it. It's just consistently engaging, beautifully written, beautifully illustrated. Although the illustrations are fairly horrifying. And just, you owe it to yourself to read this if you're a fan of cosmic horror or if you're just a fan of horror in general. Really love, I really love this book. It's a masterpiece. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, demolish that like button. Just actually ruin it. And why not subscribe and click the bell so that you never miss an upload. It would really, it would, I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah, bye.